Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Empire Total War with the Imperial Splendor Mod. Last time around, we fought the Russians as our war on the Danish-Russian alliance started. The goal of the war is really to capture Copenhagen, since that's a victory goal. But we did inflict heavy casualties on the Russians, or at least territorial casualties in a sense. Uh, they lost, I think, 3,000 men so far, but they've, well, they, no, they've lost even more because of the three towns that I took. Um, so they've maybe lost maybe 9,000 men in total, and they've lost four territories. They lost the Lemberg region, the region around Lemberg, the region around Minsk, the region around Riga, and they lost the entirety of Sweden once we took Stockholm, which was only guarded by a thousand men. Today we're actually going to be able to complete what we set out to do, which was take Copenhagen. There's a very small garrison holding it. We only got three Danish line infantry, one hussar, and one four-pounder cannon, and then the rest is armed citizenry, but since it's a victory province, I thought we'd go ahead and play it. And after we're done with that, we'll see really what the enemy comes up with. I can see that a lot of Austrian troops are now moving down to counter the Russian attack. And since they cut up, cut off kind of from supply, and the fact that they split up their force, I'm not sure this group around here, even though it's a really high star general. I'm not entirely sure how long these guys will survive for. They should really try to retreat back to Russia proper at this point. Especially, or really, before we're able to fully replenish this troop. So they should already have been trying to leave this area. And at the same time, we've got extra Austrian troops up here. They could renew their attack gained with this one, because now we're just one jump away from Moscow. But enough of that. Enough of that. Let's go ahead and play the Battle of Copenhagen and take control of uh, Denmark. The city of Copenhagen lays before us. It's actually in between the, the, our deployment zone, where the enemy deploys kind of in this half of the town and we deploy just outside. The interesting thing we want to see, of course, is the ability of the Felt Jäger Regiment. Their range is so much further than anything else. I mean, it's probably like five times as much as... So their range is 350 compared to a hundred for normal units. So it's three times, or three and a half times as long or as far away um, as a normal unit can fire. Um, and then we've got the elite unit right here. And that's about it. Should probably move the cannons to the front. Um, what we do is we move the Jaegers a little bit over to this side, and then move the cannons right about there, I think. Or maybe, yeah, this will be fine, and then the mortar behind. Most of the grenadiers have been placed in the back, as re all of them actually have been placed in the back as reserves. We'll see if we need to send them up to bayonet charge. Otherwise, this is how it goes. You know what? I will actually deploy the Jaegers even further to the side. So we'll have them out here. Maybe I should have one on each side. To kind of cover... Maybe that's better, actually. We'll have one on each side than to, ma and than to have... Both of them on the same side. So they kind of cover the flanks. They won't do a lot of good use with that long range fighting kind of in and close around the town. Cavalry on the sides. Let's go ahead and start. Right. 
the Danish troops deploying a lot of troops over on this side. So it was good that I deployed the Grenadiers over on this side. As soon as the battle starts, the Feldjägers are already on the way in targeting the Danish troops. And they shot surprisingly a high amount of them. Cannons. Not really able to fire at anything, it seems. What if we tear down this house? Let's see, what would I what do I want to do in terms of movement of troops? Let's go ahead and move these guys up parallel to the cannons. Reposition a bit more. Get the Jaegers kind of out of the forest on an angle there. Uh saws further out over there. And then on this side, why don't we set them up like... No, we don't want to cover the Jaegers, do we? But it's still a little bit of an angle there, I think. Now the Jaegers kind of being covered by that house, but if they go further out, they can flank fire from over there, and the Dragoons can be behind. Oh, what's that? Enemy cannon regiment got destroyed. I was aiming for this house, but the enemy cannons got hit. And they... Oh, one cannon shot bounced through and destroyed more or less all of it. The enemy is coming in close enough that it's probably high time to switch to canister. Loads of armed citizenry. They're all going for the Jaegers. I'm going to deploy grenadiers over there, quickly. And we're going to have the Hussars join in to stop the armed citizenry from running down and overpowering my uh, Jaegers. The Jaegers lost six men and all of that was actually due to the cavalry riding those six men down. We're going to since the Jaegers do have such range, they will move further back. So we immediately kind of sent this unit running. And now we're stuck fighting this one. Thing about the um, the peasants is that they actually outrange normal line infantry, which is a bit odd. Now they're coming within range of the main musketry group. So a lot of a Danish, the actual Danish line infantry coming on this side. We're going to move these troops back a bit. I think as support, we're going to move up the elite unit. It's going to join on that side. Got pretty good. You're setting up over there. Let's pull the cavalry back. And then bring up the grenadiers. And have them fire upon what's left of that. And then the musketeers will continue to fire on the Danes over there. Get out of there, Hussars. A little bit of fire coming in from the grenadiers. Without being able to shock the uh, Sitsunri. Kind of forced to continuously flee here. Or retreat. We're gonna go into the forest. We got hit there by one volley. Not too bad though. And after they fire that, they're actually retreating. What are you guys doing? Seemingly not a lot. You know what? All. All cannons will fire on this unit. Run up canister straight through the side. And hopefully that should work pretty well. And they were routed really quickly and we can see the key result here. Focus now on this unit. There's not a lot of fire I'm seeing. It's because they're Prioritizing wrong. Uh, cavalry move further back. And then the elite will take your place. 
the units are really prioritizing the wrong units to fire at. So no wonder it doesn't look like we're firing a lot across the line here. The Jaegers with such long range doesn't need to be sitting that close to the enemy. So I can move back. And the guard will slightly angle towards the enemy. So now when I actually... Oh, they're charging over here. It's just armed Sitsun Rido, and what I'm going to do is we're going to put this one there and just close it together like a trap. Hold your fire. There's a risk of friendly fire now. So there's no point in you guys firing. Now throw these guys in. Get the Grenadiers flanking over there. Jaegers should be uh, able to target these and we should be able to shock them with the Hazars. We got the charge going in and as the enemy was sandwiched in between these two units, kind of fell apart pretty quickly there. Wanted you gain ground on the enemy. Oh no! I completely missed that. Danish line infantry attacked the Jaegers and actually broke through the line, isolating the uh, Leibgard battalion. Sounds a way odd way of saying it. The Leibgard battalion. The uh, guard battalion. Isolating them. Luckily though, I had a unit of Dragoons ready to be sent in against the Danish line infantry. But I don't think in a prolonged fight the uh, Dragoons are going to do too well. However, this unit is going to sandwich the guys over there. So that should be doing fine. We sent the Danes over away over there. Get back into normal line fighting formation. Time to send in the Hussars. And we advance these units at the same time. Hussars dashing across the field. And an unaware Danish armed citizen reunit. Quickly routing it and cutting them all down. At the same time, this unit gave up, as he was alone in that area. Over here, they're still fighting. 310 men. And then there's 243 Danish troops. And we've got Danish line infantry. Actually, inflicting quite a bit of damage. Musketeer battalion fighting over here. Good flank shots on the Danish infantry. They're now retreating. This unit kind of forgot to move the Dragoons, but they actually broke down the Danish line infantry. I've had a problem with cavalry taking care of stuff on this on their own, usually suffering heavy casualties. Now, this one suffered heavy casualties. They lost 100 men, but they did break down the Danish line infantry. March and you will move. So suddenly this Danish unit is now gonna get sandwiched by two of ours. Gonna continue moving over there. Got bloody Dan Danish unit. Let the cavalry run them down. Cannon can fire at that unit. You will march on those. What other unit is running there? It's a musketeer battalion. Why did they run? I completely missed on what was going on there. Let's see if we can kind of get up 
really close to the Danish line. Fire and then charge. So the Danes fire their shot. Now it's our turn to fire our shot. Wish we were a little bit quicker on that. I hope to god you're not going to stop and reload. Oh, you fire by rank. Oh yeah, because it's an elite unit. That's uh, very bad. Uh, god awful plan by me. And elite units are very expensive, so that's going to cost me a lot. However, it uh, opened up for the uh, Dragoons to come in. And the enemies kind of splintered their unit. Should make them susceptible for a cavalry charge. They were able to kind of line up in a proper way. We're able to break through kind of here and kind of break them up through here. Good shots over there. Most of the Danish units at this point are broken. I wonder if I want to continue to hold on to that. Maybe these guys fire once more. And... Once that's done, we'll actually charge. And we'll get this one involved as well. The Dragoons have already won a fight, so why don't they win too? We almost made the same kind of mistake as the uh, as I did with the elite battalion. However, we did manage to uh, get that charge in. The enemy is winning slightly, but once the unit coming in from behind gets there, it should go through. Mm, I should have moved this one a lot faster. This Danish unit can actually win against both these charges, possibly. If I'm not careful. We're winning slightly with the Dragoons. I'm kind of surprised that the Danish haven't lost the will to fight at this point, given how many men they've lost. Or how many men they have left, I should say. There's only two units left. The Danes fight on hard. In both these places. Huh. They're fresh. So with the addition of these guys. We should definitely... Be able to break the Danes, and they are wavering, and so are these guys. And now they broke as we gained superiority in this area. And the Danish capital has fallen to us, which is great. It took longer than I thought, but I kind of messed up on this flank, lost the. Um, a lot of light infantry. There was another line infantry unit that ran, and then that mm, kind of failure of me forgetting that the um, elite infantry fired my rank. So I didn't really get that run up fire charge that I wanted. And given kind of the reload rate, I don't think I don't think it works in the I don't think it works in this mod because the reload rate is just too quick in the way they fire so you can't execute it in a really good way. Maybe if you get the enemy while they're moving or like repositioning and then you can stop fire and get in but yeah it doesn't work as well as I, I had hoped <laughs> definitely didn't with that said let's go back to the uh, campaign map and take a look at the score Here's the result of the battle. We deployed about similar force to the Danish. There's a difference of about 400 men. We deployed 5,800. The enemy deployed 6,200. We lost 2,000 of our men. So quite high losses in that regard. 
However, the Danish lost everything. But then again, it's a town battle. The Yosar Regiment was the one that killed the most. Dragoons coming in second. Then we've got Musketeer Battalions. We've got Feldjäger actually turning up here. Only lost seven men. And killing 351 must have been the guys on the right that did that. Since the other unit actually got pretty badly cut down. A, the Leib or the Battalion Leib Guard lost a lot of men and didn't actually kill that many. So they did really poorly. However, they gained Chevron. So I guess that's good. Only 28 of those guys survived. However, these guys deploy at only 150, I think it was. Or maybe, no, 125. So they lost 100 men in this unit, while this one only lost 7. <laughs> Danish capital secured. Um, I can't afford to fix anything up. And even with the exempting them from the tax, they're really unhappy, but that's because of the college. We're going to burn that down. We gained a lot of ports from this. And with having Copenhagen capital and Stockholm, we should be making a lot of money. Now, I built a lot of armies and stuff, so that reduced it. But now with the gain of all these territories, I exempt a lot of the areas from tax. So maybe... But once, once we get that back, we should make a lot of money. Yeah, exempting territories, I've got one, two, three, four, five territories that are exempt from tax right now. Hopefully, we'll get that around and start making tons of money. A lot of my fur pelts trade is being... Uh, is being raided, but the thing is... My fur trade comes entirely kind of from Finland. I guess it's the fur posts in Sweden that are counted as raided because uh, basically everything in Sweden is burning because of all the war that's been going on here. We're going to move this fleet to port. And once that's done, I want to make sure that we take out Norway, I think. Before we sign peace. Or maybe I should, you know what, I should do that already now before the enemy has time to actually come again. Or at least with the Russians, I think. Will the Russians accept a white peace in terms of... Well, it's not really a white piece, but will they uh, accept a ceasefire right now? With all that territory loss. Missing string. Okay, so they have a missing string. If I find that missing string, they might go ahead and agree to this. What I could do then is I could give them back, give back the Minsk area. Because what I want to do is, of course, I want to... Uh, I'm mostly concerned about uniting the Germans, not so much in conquering huge areas of Russian land. So... I'm not going to move out the troops, but we, let's see about if Russia wants peace. If I give them back some of that territory they lost. They're still missing string. They want to continue the war? Well, uh, then we will continue the war. Let's go ahead and end turn and see what the enemy comes up with. The Russians double down, as we can see here. It's actually Russian troops that are fighting in the background, I believe. Enemy, they raided our fur post up in Finland. And they're actually moving in quite sizable troops towards Finland. Workers on strike in Denmark to the point where we have to shoot at them. They also raided some mines in Sweden. We have letter of demand from Denmark. Workers on strike in a lot of the conquered territories. Theater built in Flanders and also a fort. The cotton gin has been invented. 
Okay, so we managed to get... The nobles are on our side now, when we burned to down the college. Um, what I really need to do is the Imperial Palace, I believe. It gives five. And then this one would give two. So that's two thousand... Five thousand. That's expensive, but that should work to keep this under wraps. In terms of what does would it cost? It's cost eight thousand to replenish that army. We're not going to do that. Must make sure that kind of eight thousand for Sweden. That's a bit too expensive right now, anyways. Um, Riga is uh, fine. We can actually even start to tax them a lot because they've got. We're going to burn down the church school. I should have done that a long time ago. And I'm going to build a port here. Um, trade. There's a Russian troop moving through here. It's going to burn a lot of shit. Um, church should be built here. This one should be repaired. That should work pretty well if I do repair that. This one costs a thousand. I think we'll build a church instead. To kind of turn this province around. Oh, it's actually it's going to take too long to turn it around. Let's build a coaching inn instead. There is no inns in this province. Here I would also actually like an inn, but the enemy is so close. So instead we repair this. You know what? I could possibly on you know we have an inn here. It's just burned to the ground. Need to inflict. Another military defeat on the Russians, maybe even take a territory to force them back to the uh, negotiation table. Um, it's a Russian army, we need to keep a track on that. Oh, there's a lots of Austrian coming now, coming down, and they're gonna hopefully sweep away the Russians, retake this. It's gonna kind of change the balance here again. We have a lot of Danish. Uh, intellectuals out running about as we burnt down this place. Good thing about Sweden is they're all, or Sweden and Denmark is they're all Protestants. Is there any place 650? That's okay. You can see about at least fixing up some of the stuff that they've burnt down all over the area here. Finland needs. We need to send an army to Finland, but I don't dare move out this army just yet. There's a high nine repression from the army. If I move them out, it's going to be minus nine. Is there any troop I can actually muster and move out to? We got these guys. They're not really needed in this area. And then, same possibly with some of this army. So we gather that, and we move that together with some of the troops here, and we put that on the boat. We can move those guys over to Finland to make sure that we can repel the Russians coming in there, and yeah. We've got some plans and some moves to make. I really want to make... We really should ma start ma pushing over some of these uh, priests over to the eastern front now. This place, 74% se Protestant. They still have one point in un religious unrest. Here's two points. Flanders got none. Really need to start moving them east instead. Given the big territorial gains we made here. But now my uh, attack has kind of stalled because all my armies are locked down, dealing with rebuilding everything. Um, yeah. But uh, this will be it for this episode. By next time, I would hopefully be ready to. 
sign a peace treaty with the Russians, maybe completely destroy the Danish, and then we could see about focusing in on dealing with the German states. So all of them, uh, more or less, are allied with each other. I don't think Bavaria is... Maybe Bavaria is the exception. No, Bavaria is part of that alliance of Saxony, Hessen Castle, and Württemberg, or Württemberg. And they're in extension, I think, allied with... No, they're not actually allied with um, Austria. So we could bypass the Austrians and t take out these three then. Or four, I mean. So, Württemberg... Cologne, Dresden, and Munich should be taken out in one war, which would be almost a battle per area. Hopefully, though, I would be able to lure the enemy out of the forts rather than actually fight fort battles. There's a fort at Dresden, there's a fort at in the Rhineland, there's a fort in Württemberg. There isn't one in Munich, though. So that could work pretty well. I am moving over a spy, or an envoy, to make sure that I've got an idea of what's going on here. For some reason, they've, uh, their army is broken up. What? The, who were they at war with? Are they at war with Venice? They're not at war with anyone, so I guess that was a revolution then. Yes, most likely a revolution, which they just now are coming... Uh, that's just now coming under control, probably because they're building a royal palace. But, with all of that said, it's time to end the video. So, as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!